Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Back in the day, only a few aircraft could fly at supersonic speeds. When an aircraft is flying at supersonic speed, it is actually traveling faster than the speed of sound, outrunning the sound waves it generates as it moves. The efforts for attaining supersonic flight dates back to World War II. When the Lockheed P-38 Lightning attained a speed of more than 400 miles per hour for the first time in history. But due to its structural shortcomings, it would start to shake violently while approaching the speed of sound. To overcome this problem, Bell Aircraft Corporation began to develop X-1 aircraft based on the structure of a 50 caliber bullet, which allowed it to remain stable at supersonic speed. On October 14, 1947, U.S. Air Force Captain Chuck Yeager flew an X-1 nicknamed Glamorous Glennis and conducted the first successful supersonic flight. This flight cemented Jaeger's name in the records of aviation history and proved invaluable to U.S. fighter designs throughout the rest of the century. In 1986, the United States Air Force introduced a new supersonic bomber named B-1 Lancer, or simply Bone. Featuring a combination of excessive payload capacity and increased speed. The B-1 Lancer has four General Electric F-101 turbofan engines that produce a combined thrust of over 130,000 pounds. These engines are tested in a special facility called a hush house. Before and after maintenance or repairs to ensure they function correctly and identify potential issues. The engine is towed into the hush house, running at various power levels while technicians monitor its performance. The hush house is covered with sound absorbing materials to reduce engine noise. On the other hand, it also includes a ventilation system to remove exhaust gases from the building. This testing process is critical for the B-1 Lancer to operate properly and ensure the safety of the crew. The B-1 Lancer undergoes other maintenance tasks to ensure its operational readiness further. Before takeoff, the airmen towed the aircraft to a hangar facility or flight line. Where the airmen perform routine inspections, lubrication, and servicing of the various aircraft systems. During nighttime operations, an aircraft marshaller guides the planes at an airport using illuminated marshalling wands for enhanced visibility. The marshaller makes sure that the intended path of the aircraft is clear of obstructions before giving the signals. When the B-1 Lancer is loaded with weapons, it may need to move at a rapid speed to take off. This may be achieved with a full afterburner, which provides increased thrust to an airplane with the help of an additional combustion component.
The basic phenomenon of the afterburner is simple, accelerating the exhaust gas of the plane to a higher velocity, thereby increasing thrust. Apart from the V-1 Lancer, only a few other aircraft that can travel at supersonic speeds are capable of performing a full afterburner. This allows them to enter combat rapidly. The B-1 has a unique design with a variable sweep wing capable of moving from 15 degrees to 67 and a half degrees. The aircraft uses forward swept wing settings for takeoff. Landings. And high altitude cruising. Whereas reverse swept wing settings are used in high subsonic and supersonic flights. Most aircraft, such as commercial planes, have a straight wing design, which is typically adequate for low speed of flight. The design of an aircraft matters a lot. However, when it comes to operational capabilities, the importance of engines cannot be neglected. An American aerospace company named Pratt & Whitney has produced the most powerful and advanced fighter jet engine, the F-135. With over 40,000 pounds of thrust, unmatched, low observable signature, world-class thermal management, and the most advanced integrated engine control system ever created, the F-135 engine is considered the heartbeat of the F-35 Lightning II. The engine provides unrivaled performance to the warfighter, enabling operations in the most advanced threat environments. Recently, Lockheed Martin announced its support of General Electric's XA100 engine as a potential replacement for the F-135 engine that powers the F-35 Lightning II. General Electric's XA100 is an adaptive cycle engine that will be capable of producing 45,000 pounds of thrust. Therefore, it will be more powerful and efficient than the existing low-bypass turbofans. It is engineered to easily switch between high thrust and high efficiency modes, allowing it to adapt to just about any situation an F-35 could encounter in the air. Adaptive engines, you know, really represent the future and important for a number of different reasons. First and foremost, because it provides a significant operational capability to the warfighter. Uh, so as we, as we look to the future uh, for, for combat aircraft, especially with the F-35 and other aircraft, the engine is becoming more and more integrated with the aircraft. The new engine upgrade for the F-35 seems promising, but Pratt & Whitney believe it would be best to use it in future sixth generation fighters. They suggest a relatively fast and cheap solution the F-35's engine core upgrade, which is a drop-in solution, meaning it can be integrated directly into the jet without requiring significant modifications. According to Pratt & Whitney, the engine core upgrade is the most expeditious to deliver a capability to the F-35 fighter that is unknown today, but undeniably needed in the future. This upgrade will enable the warfighter to fully employ all capabilities required to be operationally ready for any threat environment. The right time and place for incorporating the adaptive engine is to the 6th gen future fighters. 
And we believe that the F-35, which is a weapon system that's performing well, the right application for that is the engine core upgrade. The F-35B is the short takeoff and vertical landing, or STOVL variant, of the F-35 Lightning II. It is an engineering marvel and the most versatile aircraft in the United States fighter jet arsenal. The F-35B can travel like a plane to long distances and at high altitudes. But it is also capable of leaning vertically like a helicopter. It is equipped with a lift fan system, which is a large fan located in the center of the aircraft and generates powerful vertical airflow. This airflow from the fan, combined with the exhaust from the aircraft's engine, provides the lift needed for the aircraft to take off vertically or hover in the air. One of the main components of the F-35B's STOVL capability is its roll posts. These are very small wing-mounted exhaust ports that redirect the engine exhaust downward during vertical flight. This provides roll authority during the hover phase that helps the pilot to maintain control during takeoff and landing. Additionally, the F-35B also features a fan-driven lift system that can be adjusted for different flight modes. In conventional flight mode, the aircraft's lift system is set for maximum aerodynamic efficiency, enabling it to fly rapidly through long distances. On the contrary, during the takeoff and vertical landing mode, the lift system is adjusted to provide maximum lift and stability, which allows the aircraft to take off and land vertically. The blend of the lift fan, roll posts, and fan-driven lift system makes the F-35B one of the most advanced aircraft in the world. F-35B and B-1 Lancer are among the leading attack aircraft of the United States Air Force, which is why maintaining them is equally important. Both of these planes have powerful engines. and they must be tested and maintained timely so that any fault can be detected and rectified immediately. Besides, the engine of the F-35 Lightning II is on the verge of being replaced by a much more powerful engine. And once that happens, no fighter jet in the world would be able to challenge an F-35 in an aerial battle. That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.